Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the best way you can get some of this stuff in your own pond. Now this of course is frog spawn and it's so familiar to all of us I'm sure. We've all got fond memories of a kid where you perhaps have a few tadpoles in a jar and watch them develop into the frogs that we love and adore. And of course, these tadpoles will of course turn into, well they're not tadpoles yet, but this frog spawn will turn into the common frog that is found across Europe and the Northern Hemisphere. But of course, frogs are found throughout the world and there are many, many, many species. I'm not sure how many, but there certainly are. And they all need some form of water to carry out their life cycle and absolutely to breed and to produce more offspring. So one of the best ways you can create habitat for them is creating a wildlife pond. I know it sounds blindingly obvious, but it really is. Now ponds have declined by something in the region of a million ponds over the last century in the UK alone. So that's a phenomenal amount of habitat that's been lost. And for those of you that are wanting to create your own habitat for these amazing amphibians, then please do check out some of my previous videos on how to make a wildlife pond if you're looking to make a pond and of course there's all the top tips on how to do that in some of the videos on the channel and I'll put a link at the end of this video as to some of those videos so you can have a look at them. But do get in touch if you've got any questions on how to create a wildlife pond then drop them in the comments below I'll be happy to answer. Many of you seem to be doing that at the moment which is absolutely fantastic news for our birds, amphibians, reptiles, butterflies <laughs> believe it or not and everything else, dragonflies. So yes please do have a look at some of those videos. But this pond, as I say, is only about three meters by two meters and it's more than enough food for the tadpoles once they develop and they hatch out uh, from the egg casings where they will start to then, uh, initially they will eat the eggshell or the egg, uh, the embryo, if you like, that they were, they were brought into the world in. So they'll eat that first for some protein. They'll then move on to eating some of the algae in your pond. So don't get rid of all the algae in your pond. They will start off a bit of a vegetarian lifestyle, but as they grow and develop, they then will uh, turn towards eating more insects. So, you know, it's important to have a variety of plants within your pond. And again, all those plants and what you should be planting your pond with are in some of the previous videos. But the best thing you can do is put a wildlife pond in. However, it's not just as simple as that. To do that obviously is one thing, but you then need to be encouraging habitats into your own garden that are going to really help the uh, the frogs if you like around your garden to provide cover all year round and food now frogs will of course eat a lot of insects they'll eat worms they'll eat quite a lot of things to be honest uh, i've even in some grim stories seen uh, them eating some uh, common newts which is uh, yeah doesn't take for a very, very pleasant watch but they're pretty omnivorous they'll eat a lot of things uh, so the frogs actually need a lot of habitat to hunt in, so longer grass, longer vegetation, and it's March now, but I've only just cut down some of this vegetation around the pond, so for those that have been out early in January, there's lots of habitat for them to hunt through, and of course you can see I take a fairly wild approach to some of the borders behind me, so there's loads of longer grass uh, for them to hunt through and find insects. So providing that shelter, providing the food for the frogs as in the adult form is absolutely key to attracting them into your own garden. Then of course you can look at providing some overwintering habitat. Now frogs of course will hibernate over the winter months so and they will hibernate in anything like old log piles, um, piles of stone, rubble. I'm sure you've been turning over some parts of the garden and pulling out a few logs and bricks and found some frogs and toads in there as well. Anywhere where they can keep away from the frost and keep um, slightly uh, warmer, if you like, through the winter months. But actually this winter, I've seen Tracy Pye on the YouTube channel, who uh, is a, an avid follower, a great friend of mine. She's captured some amazing footage of uh, some frogs actually completely frozen in a pond whilst mating a few weeks ago, back in February. Uh, absolutely worried to death about them the pond then thawed out and these frogs were gone by the morning so and I actually after a bit of research I didn't know this but frogs can actually shut down their entire bodies their heart can stop completely and they can actually just lay there motionless whilst being frozen solid until the warmer weather kicks in when their heart kicks back in and off they go again I mean <laughs> if that's not um, an incredible reason to try and attract these amazing animals into garden i don't know what is so yes yeah, so so providing habitat for them shelter for them through the winter months is absolutely key so the three main things then that you need to be doing in your garden to 
attract frogs and get this frog spawn into your garden is obviously firstly get a wildlife pond secondly provide some longer grassy habitats and areas for them to hunt in herbaceous borders as well for some of the insects for them to hunt through and three of course provide that habitat for them through the winter months now not only that really you need to be thinking about access as well obviously these things don't just teleport into your garden they need to be able to get into your garden so make sure there's some little uh, depressions under the fence panels if you've got a fence if you've got a hedge as a boundary perfect they'll find their way in uh, no problem at all but make sure there are some holes under the fences so that they can get in and out of the garden on all sides so that there's uh, every chance and as much chance as possible as attracting as many of these amazing amphibians to your garden as you can so i hope that's given you some ideas as to how you can help these amazing creatures and give them a home in your own back garden as i say this is a three by two meter pond it doesn't have to be this big you can use a barrel pond sunk into the ground one of the old belfast sinks and i'm sure they'll come and lay in that no problem at all so please if you've got any questions do drop them in the comments below Feel free to give the, ch the channel a subscribe, of course, if you've enjoyed the video and hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. And thank you very much for watching and I will see you all soon on the next video. Mm -hmm.